everybody who wants to have his share of the limelight uh, coming in front of the camera and displaying a few physical poses and passing that off as yoga. That is not at all yoga. That's a stretching exercise. Or uh, that could be um, strength exercise without using um, external weights. You go to the gym, you use iron weights. Or you could do the same exercises using uh, body weight. Now, stretching and strength building, this is not at all yoga. I'm not denying the importance of this. Everybody should have a flexible body. Stretching is great. We all must have powerful muscles. So, uh, having a well-toned and strong body is again great. But please, that is not yoga. That is not yoga. Let's not uh, corrupt the very concept itself. And uh, if you will go closely into the psychological aspects of it, the ego has a vested interest in, <coughs> in limiting yoga, in actually caging yoga within the concept of physicality. Because if yoga is not arrested within the bodily walls of physicality, then yoga will will attack the ego itself and the ego does not want that. So the ego has played a clever dirty trick. It has said yoga is wonderful, yoga is great and yoga is physical. Now the moment you liberate yoga from these artificial and unwise physical constraints, yoga becomes such a powerful force of life transformation then you have to read, then you have to understand. Then you have to go into what uh, Patanjali and Sri Krishna actually meant. Now, that is something we do not want to go into. But we are very happy with having a slim body because it, it helps, it helps in doing whatever we want to do. And that's the evil in it, whatever we want to do. Now, why do you want to do whatever? Why don't you do that? which is right and yoga is about that itself doing what is right not doing whatever you have ample gurus who will come over and say oh you know you do this and then you can do whatever you want to do now the moment you hear uh, this kind of phraseology uh, that yoga will help you do better whatever you want to do i suppose one must run away because that's exactly antithetical to yoga. Yoga is not about doing whatever you want to do. It's ego that says that. Not, not, not the uh, dedicated, devoted, wise mind. No, that does not come from there. It's, I mean, amazing. The, the ways of the, of the inner uh, uh, mischief maker. We can, we can take the greatest gift given to us and turn it into something uh, that we want to use, use as almost as an intoxicant, you know, like, like, uh, like youngsters who take cough syrups to get inebriated. There is, there is no medicine that cannot be used. As, as a narcotic drug and that's what we are doing to yoga as well. It's a medicine. Okay. Yes, please. You know, you're saying that we have to do the right thing for the right reason in the right manner. You know, absolutely right intent and again you're talking of doing the right dharma in every aspect, having the right thoughts, having the right action, having balance and pursuit of even economic benefits in worldly goals, using the right means to achieve the right ends, you know. So means are equally important. If you're right, we are so identified by our name, our body, where we come from. Uh, we don't identify as souls. We don't identify as, uh, you know, souls in a body, you know, so to say. You know. So I understand and it 
uh, let me ask you another question. Uh, today on the World Yoga Day, is there a mantra you already said, do the right thing for the right reason? You already said, you know, don't abuse your body, don't abuse your mind, and mind comes from right practice, from doing the right things, you know, balance in life, doing whatever your dharma is, you know, whatever you do, you know, there is a there is the right thing to do in that, doing that. And when your mind, they say when your mind and your actions are in sync, you know, what you say, what you do, what you believe, if all three are in sync, then you have a healthy mind, so to say. You have a healthy living, you have a harmonious living, whatever word you want. You are living to your higher purpose. I mean, what is this fixation with perfection today? So in, I am a Hindu. I only believe the perfect person is Lord Shiva. You know, only Lord Shiva is perfection incarnated. Right? So, what? how do we live our life? You know, while it is a conversation on yoga and yoga, you, you brought in a larger connotation what, doing yoga in what context? Doing yoga for what purpose? No, no. Hence, give us some thumb rules for living your life. Then. You see, that exactly is the point. If you take Shiv as perfection, then there has to be a certain love for perfection. And life has to be a relentless, unending pursuit of that perfection. That which might be unattainable, and the scriptures uh, clearly say so, that it is something that you will never really um, get to hold um, or come to touch or uh, uh, really meet in the normal sense of the word. But still, if you just remain devoted to it and pursue it, life will become worth living. Not the attainment, even the pursuit, even the pursuit is sufficient. And that pursuit is something that would anyway happen if your respect for that which you are calling as perfection or Shiv is genuine. What kind of person am I if I, if I venerate Krishna and have nothing to do with what uh, he is teaching? So, and that is not really a policy or an option or a smart trick to play to oneself. You see, the mind is fed up of its follies. The mind is a constant thirst. The mind is always stuck, always challenged always uh, bemused, Seek more. Seek more. seeks more, is not satisfied with what it has and does not even know what it really seeks. So, going towards that which you are calling as perfection, somebody could call it contentment, somebody could call it Shiva or Krishna, is anyway the only option that you have because without that pursuit you will anyway never uh, feel any kind of uh, repose or uh, contentment or, uh, or rest. One would constantly be agitated, one would constantly be dissatisfied with life and that's not how we want to spend our life. This is not uh, just theory or ideology, this is the fact of who we are. We are born discontented and because there is just so much agitation within and darkness within, therefore there is no option but to spend life in pursuit of light, hmm? that same light that you could call as perfection or Atma or Brahma or Truth or Shiv or Krishna or Ram. Hmm? The name uh, is your choice. But, but that's an inevitability with anybody who has some sense and self-love. Why do you want to destroy your ears? That's the question we must ask. 
I mean, one is already not all right, and one is acting in ways that would only further the inner sense of injury and disquiet. Why does one want to do that? There, is, there can be no sensible, possible reason. So spirituality, therefore, is not something that one gets into. Spirituality has to be the only way of life if one is not adamant on self-destruction. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.